Yeah, sounds good. Let's get into that Q&A with Mark from Plate Snacks. Hey, Mark, we're going to start with your gym, which we've already heard a little bit about. Let's get into uh, some more details. Like, when did it start? When did you start your home gym? Let's see. My wife and I moved into our house in 2014. So we had, like I mentioned, the, the split basement, and we decided to make one half a gym. So we put down the flooring, and initially we bought an elliptical because we wanted like a cardio piece. And then I just had a weight bench, some Olympic plates and a bunch of standard plates. I think a dumbbell set like five to 30. And this is all stuff that I had like in grade school and junior high, you know, high school that my dad just gave me. And then eventually we bought a Peloton. So like that was like our gym. I didn't really work out at home too much. I would do cardio at night. I'd use it a little bit on the weekends, but I was mostly a commercial gym guy or, you know, just like a local gym guy. Uh, with like my work schedule and my commute, I would drive, you know, to downtown Cleveland where the office is and I'd work out there, shower, walk right into work and then, you know, I'm done for the day. So um, I didn't use it too much. And then in 20, you know, 2020, March, my work sent me home to work remote and all the gyms were closed. So I was lucky to already have like something in place. I made the commitment to working out at home because one, I didn't have a choice. And then two, I had a, another kid on the way. So with two boys, it's, it's very difficult to sneak out for an hour, even an hour, hour and a half, you know, make the wife happy. Yeah. So that's when I started to kind of expand the gym. And, uh, like I mentioned, I sold the weight bench and some of the standard plates upgraded the rack to a PR 1100. I had a bigger vision of expanding it and doing the whole erector set type style and um so i upgraded to a rogue rm3 eventually let's see what else did i do and like throughout the the first six months of you know working from home i was like scouring marketplace trying to find like more weights to add just because i didn't want to lug things from one side of the gym to the other you know i wanted you know weights over here so, so i can just deadlift and use those and not have to pull them from behind the rack and all this other stuff, you know, just being lazy, I guess. But yeah, and I'm, I'm all about convenience and making my life, you know, as simple as possible. So if I can simplify my workouts by not having to unrack something to do another movement, you know, I was all about that. So I was scouring marketplace and just trying to find, you know, a bunch of, you know, more weights, you know, new bar, you know, that I could use for a landmine and stuff like that. Trying to simplify, you know, my gym workouts and stuff like that. Eventually, that's kind of when the plate snacks idea came to me. So, you know, while I was buying these weights, I was looking to refinish them. And, you know, I'd find like these crazy deals and, you know, they'd be like super rusted weights. So I was looking up on like YouTube, uh, different Facebook groups, Reddit, just to see like how people were refinishing these plates. During that process, I kind of noticed how people were kind of, you know, doing different like color schemes and painting their plates. And I saw people doing like hand painted plates and stuff like that. And then I just kind of thought like, Hey, like there's gotta be an easier way to do this. You know, the first thing that came to mind was like, why wouldn't vinyl work? You know, it's I'm kind of like merging what my gym is to like how plates and X started, but it just kind of like organically like happened. I wasn't setting out to start a business or anything, but, um, that's when I first came up with the idea as I was building out my gym, I was flipping equipment to and basically having, you know, those flips, like pay for new equipment in the gym and stuff like that. Let's get into the start of plate stacks. So you're, you're looking at people finishing rusted out plates and, and you get the idea, why couldn't vinyl work? When did the idea of like plate snacks, um, that name and like, um, the, uh, the theme of your company come alive? So yeah, I thought of the idea first, and then this is March, April, 2020. And then I, I just kind of like sat on it and, you know, I threw it on the back burner. Um, I mentioned it to my wife a few times, but I didn't really think much of it until late summer. So like August, September, I saw people painting, you know, different like snack, like donut designs on there. I think, you know, mimicking like the, the fringe sports stuff, you know, like the pizza designs and stuff like that. And then I saw people in the fitness industry, like are all about donuts for some reason people like like snacks and i think it's a you know a good balance like working out and like the snacks and you know i think people find it funny too you know <laughs> having donut themed stuff and um i see it in people's gyms all the time and it's, it's pretty crazy but i initially thought like okay you know donuts pizza cookie um sushi you know like a cinnamon roll just like round treats 
would be cool on these designs. So I had, you know, I bought like 10 domains trying to come up with like the actual name, you know, mm. you know weight, weight snacks, um, all these other, you know, plays on it. And, um, I just made the decision. I'm like, all right, I'll go with plate snacks. I might change it later, but that's what I'm going to start with. So this is late summer and I came up with like a name. I decided I'm going to, I'm going to go with it. So I went to a bunch of local printers, um, told them what I was trying to do. I literally brought weights with me and, um, I left them there and they're testing materials for me. And then they gave me a bunch of stuff to try. So, you know, I was seeing what would work, you know, I was rubbing plates together. I was banging them. I was like spraying them with like, like Windex and other cleaners just to make sure they would stick, dunk them in water, um, just like different elements. Cause I wasn't going to, if they weren't going to stick, I wasn't going to move forward with this cause that's not a product and I didn't want to like put something out there and then just like everyone get mad that it like, it sucks. So I made sure it was like a viable product. Eventually I found the right stuff that would work. I printed up some designs. I started an Instagram account and then I was working on a website for the business. So now we're in about October, November, uh, when I started the Instagram account and I, you know, I built it up to like 40 followers. Right. And it was Thanksgiving day and my wife uh, was pregnant with our second son and we ended up in the ER. She had like, you know, a pregnancy scare and we were waiting to get discharged. Everything was okay. And we're just in the waiting room. Just, you know, I'm checking my phone. I look down and on Instagram, my followers went from like 40 to like 400 in a matter of like an hour or two. One of the accounts, one of the garage gym accounts is actually garage gym, uh, fanatics, Alan. He had shared one of my posts that I'd made and people were like messaging him and like, Hey, how do I get these? You know, they're messaging me. He's messaging me saying like, Hey, people want these things, like explain like what they are and like, when can people get these? And I wasn't planning to launch the website till like after the new year, it was pretty much done, but like, I still had stuff on the admin side to like set up like all the shipping all the, you know, figuring out all that stuff. The next day is black Friday. So I said, screw it. And I launched the website. I think that first weekend I sold like $500 worth. And I was like, okay, well, like, people want these. I just kind of went with it and, um, it just kind of, you know, went from there. I just kind of let it roll. And, uh, you know, I figured, you know, there's no, not really a right time to ever launch a, a business. You know, if I waited two months to launch it, I was going to run into the same issues by just launching right away. So. I mean, that's, that's all happened relatively quick, like from March till November, like Thanksgiving. So, wow, that's pretty fast. Yeah. I mean, well, what was that first design? I came out with, uh, like five to begin with. It was the chocolate chip cookie, the donut, the pizza, the sushi, and, uh, the cinnamon roll were like the first five that I snacked. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to ask, where'd you get the designs from? Like, did you have like an artist you're working with or? So the initial ones I designed, um, pretty much all of them. I did have another designer that I outsourced some of the stuff to, but like with all my designs, I'll either sketch them up and, you know, ship them off to, for someone to draw them up on the computer or I'll just do it myself. But these days, you know, I don't have too much time to, uh, spend working on design work. I have notebooks of, you know, That's... sketches and doodles and drawings and ideas. Everything we come out with, I sketched it up at some point. And whether I drew it up on the computer and Illustrator or not, just depends on how that week is going. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. Awesome. So in the early days, like, what would you say, like your biggest obstacle you faced was? Well, I think, um, launching on the busiest shopping day of the year is a good thing. But it's also a bad thing because it's also holiday time. We're not just in a pandemic where, you know, U.S. postal workers are not working or, you know, or people were being sick and not going into work and stuff like that. And there's delays with, you know, supply chain all across, you know, the globe. So, you know, UPS was delayed, FedEx, every, everyone was had shipments that were delayed. And then add that on top of holiday shipping, which is a super busy time anyway. The first issues I w was running into were all around shipping. So the whole month of December, you know, people were putting orders in the first week, expecting them to be ready to have them for Christmas day. But I mean, some of the stuff was delayed like four or five weeks. I basically spent that entire month in customer service mode. I don't know how many orders, probably at least like a hundred orders that I was like following up with that first month. And I was being proactive with it too. So it was by choice. It wasn't, I didn't want to 
have a slew of people, you know, angry customers saying, where's my stuff? You know, even though everything you would order is going to be delayed at some point in December of 2020, it was just insane. I'm pretty sure I got like people's Christmas cards in like March, but, um, I was reaching out to them. I'm like, Hey, you know, I just want to follow up on your order. Got dropped off on this date to the post office and the current status is this. So I, you know, I was basically playing that whole game that first month. So that was probably the biggest obstacle initially. Yeah. Um, and then after that holiday season, it got straightened out pretty quick. Yeah. December or uh, January, there's a few issues, but February, March, it kind of, kind of got back on track again. Say with the type of product that I was shipping, you know, whether it, you know, just say someone's buying just like a five pound plate snack, you know, those are like eight inches in diameter. So it's like a small product that would go in like an envelope. So something that light, it's very expensive to ship through like FedEx or UPS. So, you know, UPS first class is like your best option or else people aren't going to pay, you know, basically the same price to ship their product that the product actually costs. Yeah. So that was the other, the other piece of the puzzle is like, I was kind of like my hands were tied during that time. Yeah. And then you said, um, you were convinced to, to throw it out after that big following came and got you on Instagram about how much did you push it up? Because you said, all right, well, let's just launch the site. When were you planning on wa launching the site? I was going to wait till after the new year. So uh, over oh. a little over a month, like I said, it, it, uh, was, it's insane. Yeah, it was pretty much ready, but there's just some, you know, uh, I think there's a few order, a few initial orders. I didn't have, you know, the shipping dimensions and stuff set up. Right. So, you know, it was like a wash because I was like lost money on shipping and I was paying more for shipping. And then the other piece was just trying to figure out the right packaging and stuff. How do you ship these vinyls, decals or stickers, whatever you want to call them you know, what's the most efficient way to do that. So I was like overpaying for packaging because I was sending them in these huge stay flat mailers and those would cost me like a few dollars each, which is three times what I should have been paying. And then, um, the shipping on those, you know, to send in that packaging was extremely expensive compared to what I ship in now, which is like a, a normal, like it's like a longer box. And I kind of like roll them up a little bit. All right. Well, we're 15 months in, so let's fast forward to today. Plate snack. The first product that you started selling was the vinyl plate snacks. How has your catalog grown to, and like, what are you selling today? Initially, uh, like you said, I just had the vinyl, the vinyl plate snacks. And then, um, a couple months after the launch, I revamped my logo to what it is today. And that kind of like initiated the next push of products where I had a lot of like customers and just people that weren't customers that reached out and they're like, Hey, like I would totally buy a hat. If you had your logo on it, I'd totally buy a shirt. If you had a logo on it, Oh, can you throw this on a gym banner? I'll totally buy it. So I'm like, okay, like those are like the next three ideas, like basic apparel, kind of a no brainer. So that was like the next step that I took from there. It was just kind of like, I went down like this whole line of like adding all these other snacks and I added like the American flags and the camo. I think that summer I added the, uh, the, the wooden log design. So it's just a slew of like expanding the actual like product designs. And then the next like big jump was the ab mats with all the people that were asking about like putting like the donut on like my logo on like shirts and stuff like that. I was just trying to think of some other like products that I could expand, you know, the catalog to, but kind of stay within my branding of like, you know, the donuts and the snacks and that sort of thing. It's just kind of funny. I, I was listening to the Umso podcast by Matt Vincent and he had Dylan from Abmat on there. And I listened to that, that interview and he was just, you know, Dylan was just kind of telling his story about like how he started with Admat and meeting like Gronkowski's and he just like, you know, just kind of like went for it. I like Admat, like that's a cool company. I, I liked what, what they stand for, how they work with other individuals. So I just like emailed him and I was like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm Mark, you know, I run plate snacks. So this is what I've been doing. And I'm looking to expand my, my product line. I'd love to like get some Admats with like my logo on them. You know, we were going back and forth and the conversation evolved to like, if you're going to do this, like, why not make it like the whole thing look like a donut? And like, that's like where we kind of came up with like the frosted, like the frosting drip. And, um, mm -hmm. so that was like, and then we also talked about the pizza one, but like we waited and then eventually he's like, you know, we should launch this like pizza design. I'm like, sweet, let's do it. And, uh, Dylan's a great guy. And like, he's, he's great to work with people like really like the ad mat. So that was like the next, like evolution of like what plate snacks was offering. 
I wanted to do more gym banners and that's where the donut skull design. Oh, and that was like the next, like everyone like loved my logo at first. And then I put this design out and, um, people just like were obsessed with it. And I'm like, this is, I mean, it's a sweet design. And I actually thought about changing my main logo to that design, but I didn't do it. So some more apparel and the gym banners and flags using that new design. And then I'm just kind of like, I have a new design with a skull and like the, you know, cheese and pe pepperoni, like a pizza, like dripping down. So like, that's like the next skull design. And, uh, I think I'm going to kind of go with like a bunch of different, you know, expand nice. that a little bit and kind of offer some, just like a, another twist. And I think it kind of fits in with more people that don't want the cartoony looking donut like feel, but like they like the snack concept but want the more badass feel with like the the skull and crossbones and stuff so just kind of you know feeling out like what the customer feedback and what they like and don't like and just kind of rolling with it yeah the designs have been awesome um looking forward to seeing more as they kind of start coming out speaking of seeing more we get teased with this barbell <laughs> hanger with the uh the plate snacks and the drip is this a sign more products coming what's going on with this one yeah i don't know um you know, that, that was kind of a play off of the design on the ad mat and, um, actually, uh, Oak club manufacturing had reached out at one point about doing like a, you know, a plate snacks, like design collaboration. And they did this, I don't know if you've seen it, this like barbell holder, it's a floor stand. And I mean, the thing's a tank and they, they designed it beautifully and they had all the components to it with like you know, the layering of like the logo and stuff like that. And like the donut drip, but, um, I don't think I could have sold that as like, a in the plate snacks catalog. So I was just kind of thinking like, I think like a normal barbell hanger would be more suitable for the brand and a product that would kind of not be too extreme, you know, just like, oh, this guy sells vinyl decals and huge, like power racks and, you know. Uh, I don't, I thought that was a little, <laughs> little extreme. Yeah. I thought this would be a, another like accessory. You can call it for the gym that kind of has a branding and, um, you know, everyone could use a barbell hanger, whether it's vertical or, you know, you use like a gun rack style. People want somewhere to store their barbells and just another fun, fun way to add some customization or personalization to your, to your space. Any other accessories you're thinking about or is the brain always churning? Like it's you're not. It's always churning. Unopened to anything. No, man. But... I, I'm up all night, yeah. like writing down. Like I have so many notebooks and stuff of ideas and, you know, things just go through my mind constantly. I have a, yeah, I use the Notion app and I literally just like brain dump like all day long. Um, just I have this idea and then it's yeah. so hard to like, you know, what makes sense to do? Um, how long would this take versus doing this? And, you know, I, I think I might take this design and uh, do like an accessory holder, you know, for like belts and like bands. That's like an easy hitter. I think people would, you know, could use that. Um, and I think the next like line of stuff that I want to do, or it's not really a line, but there's a few things. The first is I want to start offering more customization. So right now it's hard and expensive to just do like a pair of 45 pound plate snacks that are custom the price of vinyl and just the design time to actually get that design. If you do a larger order, it's like, it makes more sense, you know, economically, but a smaller one-off order is very difficult to do a custom design. I have something hopefully lined up to work with an, another printer that could offer and help me do those one-off designs. And then I actually posted this today with Brandon from Strict Vision Athletics. We worked together on, he had got a couple functional trainers in his gym. It's like the weight stacks that have like plate snacks on them. And it was a custom design, but basically, you know, everything in his gym is personalized and customized and it's all like uh, superhero themed and stuff like that. And it, it's a really like cool home gym, uh, or I don't know if it's considered a home gym or not, but he, uh, kind of got like me talking about offering these custom stack designs as like a product. So that's something that could be coming down the line. So if you have like a boring weight stack, you can dress it up a little bit with a custom design. That's an awesome idea. <clears throat> yeah, that, I actually that, saw that one. Yeah, that's awesome. That that guy has sent us Instagram messages about posting his home gym and didn't end up posting it, and he got really upset. So, yeah, we're <laughs> that guy. I'm, I'm not real sure. <laughs> he didn't like uh, that. <laughs> no, he did not, and I didn't like that. He didn't like that. So, and it's clearly, he's sending it to all of the home gym people. 
because they also posted us. Like, I'm not just going to post what everyone else just posted. Right. So don't get too mad. <laughs> but yeah, no, those are cool. That's a really cool yeah. idea. Yeah, those are sweet. I've ne uh, never even thought about that. So when you do something like that, like um, for functional trainers or weight stacks in general, how do you differentiate the different weight jumps? Do you do something just like kind of universal or is it a, is that something that you can do small adjustments on for people to match their weight stacks? Yes. Does that make sense? Right now I'm still in trying to figure out the logistics of how, how I can make that work. After he posted, I, I had five, six people messaging me, you know, actually sending me pictures of their functional trainers or weight stacks. Like, Hey, yeah. like I would love this. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't have it all figured out yet. You know, eventually there's a few things. One, I'd have to get the measurements and stuff from the customer. And you know, this all takes time and my time and resources and um, to actually accomplish this. So like, it's not gonna be super cheap to do. And then the other option was to come up with, like you mentioned, say like a plate snacks standard set that anyone could get. And it's like, you know, it might be a little long, so you might have to cut like the edge or something like that. Or I might have a few different size you know, depending on how wide your weight stack is, most are 10 pound jumps. So I think that's like the safest bet, like to offer like 10 through 300. Yeah. It, and you know, we're talking about like these new products and uh, new designs and uh, collaborations. Have you ever had anything like come to mind that you try to push out and it, it just doesn't work out? Like, um, I don't want to say it failed because we, cause we all learn from mistakes and stuff like that, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had some, a couple of designs that, um, just didn't really like take off. Like I thought, like I thought, I thought like the camo would sell more. I thought the, the wooden log design would have sold more than it did. Part of that might just be, you know, the marketing around it. Maybe people weren't aware that that existed. Cause I mean, when you have so many designs, it's hard for say like a new customer that comes to your website to go through and see every design. So that could be part of it too. So I, I think as like my marketing, as I work on the, the marketing of plate snacks, I think maybe some of these like designs that weren't successful earlier on or as successful as I hoped they'd be might kind of like reemerge as like, and appear as like a new design to someone that hasn't like seen them before. Cause I, I think people see, you know, the donuts, you know, the sushi, the pizza, the American flags, I'm trying to think the, the concha design, the Mexican sweetbread uh, design is like super popular too. Like people love that one. So I think just cause it's like the bright, vibrant ones are, you know, I think what majority of my customers like. Can you share what your top designs are? Yeah. So, uh, the top designs by far are the pizza and the donut. And then I recently released a new, like variety, I call it like the variety pack of donuts. It's just like a more, more dynamic looking, you know, it's a little brighter. It has a little bit more depth donuts. So there's like a chocolate one with sprinkles. There's a new pink, uh, frosting with sprinkles. And then there's like a pink frosting with like a, like a drizzle. So those are some of the newer designs that are pretty popular. Uh, the flags are, are super popular. And then the rack magnets that I, that I put out, those are super, yeah. super popular. Like this past week alone, like I sold so many of them. I don't know if it was like one of the TikTok videos I put out or, or what, but things just like really took off on those. I'm like, you know, five orders, five, seven orders of just like rack magnets, you know, it's good for people to like add into their order too. But, um, the flags I, I released recently, I mean, it's the American flag. It's looks good on pretty much anything you put it on, but it really looks good on like those rack magnets and looks cool against, uh, you know, just sticking to your uh, rack and yeah, rack magnets that you came out with are, I mean, it's an awesome idea. If you're constantly changing J hooks and you're always forgetting like, oh, where's my, where's my incline? Where's my military press at? I mean, I think those yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not um, like, uh, you know, I think people have been using, you know, duct tape and markers and, um, you know, stickers and stuff for a long time, but it's just another, just another option. And I know there's other rack magnet options out there that are really cool too. Uh, so some people put in weights, uh, and they, it has to look a certain way, but then there are others who bring in weights or products that they don't really care what they look like. Being that you have a company that's about designing and bringing designs to weights, it may not be for everybody. Do you have any good internet hate stories you could share? <laughs> 
uh, I don't really have any like specific stories. Nothing so fun. The last few weeks, I've I've been more active on TikTok. It's it's a different beast than than Instagram and then Facebook and other other places uh, on social media. So just the a younger demographic that is not my target audience that likes to chime in in the comments. And uh, I remember the first. One of the first videos, I'm trying to think which one it was, but it had like, I called it viral, right? It went, I think it had like 250,000 um, views, but like the comments on there were just like extreme, like a bunch of smart ass kids yeah. that have to, you know, say stuff, which, you know, I find it entertaining, but it's hard to, um, <laughs> it's hard to not, you know, reply sometimes. And um, yeah, TikTok's fun. It's definitely interesting as a marketing tool for a business, but I, I will admit that it is learning and reaching my target audience a little bit better and it is driving a lot of uh, traffic to the website. So I'm going to continue, you know, trying to use TikTok, even if, you know, a lot more, a lot more internet trolls and keyboard warriors on there than some of the other platforms. Right. Jake, you want me to go back and hit any of those? I have uh, one more question. From my end, it seems like there were a number of companies that started within the home gym space right around uh when COVID started like you and uh many of them are gone or you just don't hear about them at all is there anything that you did that like helps explain why you're still around um it's kind of hard to say i think i think with some of the other companies they're just kind of like filling a void i think with during the pandemic you know the companies that were um you know making racks and trying to come out with like you know plates and you know just providing what some of the bigger companies couldn't provide during that time just because like everything happened so fast and supply chains were just like you know garbage and they kind of like did their thing and then life continued as normal and they just couldn't compete back with like the big boys so I think that's kind of what happened with some of those other companies. Plate snacks, you know, obviously not a uh, equipment manufacturer, you know, outside of that, like what other types of companies are there in the home gym space? So I, I think a lot of people have kind of embraced the home gym and a lot of people haven't, you know, have gone back to the commercial gyms, but a lot of people aren't right. I'm one of them. You know, I literally have like three gym memberships still, but like I have not been to a gym in like a, over a year. So I, I think as people are building out their home gyms, it's something that, you know, has turned into a hobby for them. And at, you know, you have something, you just kind of want to like, you know, tweak it and personalize it. And I think with a home gym, it's like the same thing, you know, oh, I have this, you know, I've been looking at this blank wall for so long, you know, let me put some banners up or some flags. So I want to like have cool designs that people would want to like hang. And then the other thing, the other part of it too, where I kind of felt Plate Snacks did well in was kind of making, and this is like kind of part of like the mission is like, you know, just making the home gym space a little bit more inviting, a little more warm, a little more exciting. So, you know, I know I talked to people during the pandemic and they were like, you know, hey, like, this is awesome. Like I hated going in the basement because it's so like dark and like dungeony in there. So like this just like makes working out a little bit more fun. So like, that's kind of what sets us a little bit apart from other people and some of the other companies, you know, in the gym space. Definitely. Great answer. Cool. Ready to wrap it up? Yeah. Mark, is there anything else you want to add before we close this? Uh, no, I think, um, I think kind of covered a lot of stuff and, you know, I'm going to continue, you know, expanding plate snacks and coming out with new designs, um, new products, you know, a lot of the products and designs that are kind of led by, by the customers and the community. So, you know, if anyone has, you know, an idea or a design they want to see, like send me an email, send me a DM, like I'll try and make it happen. Awesome. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I want to thank Mark from plate snacks for joining us tonight. Uh, Mark, you want to give them your plug? Where, where can they find you? Yeah. So, um, platesnacks.com is our website. And then, uh, on Instagram, we're very active. It's plate underscore snacks. And then, um, I guess we're on TikTok, TikTok now. So, uh, at plate snacks, no trolls, no trolls, stay out trolls, yeah, bring it, <laughs> go check out Mark at plate snacks guys. Uh, if you like tonight's episode, be sure to follow garage gym experiment on Instagram, to take partner surveys, stay active on the website to get up to date content on building out your home gym. Give us a follow on YouTube and keep listening to the Garage Gym Experiment podcast.
Jake, do you have anything else for the people? Nope. The boss says no, guys. So that's it. Bye. All right. Thanks a lot, guys.